A lot of times whenever we're having a virtual meeting like a Microsoft Teams meeting, we want to record that meeting for people who span multiple time zones or different geographies, or they simply can't make it to the meeting. If you record the meeting, you can make it so that people can watch it later and um, attend the meeting on demand. Let's see how we do that in Microsoft Teams. So I'm in a Teams meeting right here on my uh, Teams client. I happen to be the only person here, but that's okay. We can still demonstrate recording and talk about how recording works in Microsoft Teams. Any associate at Cerner can start a recording and can stop the recording. When it comes to a Teams meeting, everybody in the meeting who is an associate is equal. Every, every associate can share content and they can record the meeting if they choose to. The way that I record is I click the more actions down here in the command bar at the bottom. If I click on that, I can start recording. And once I start recording, you'll see this banner shows up at the top of the screen letting everyone know that the meeting is being recorded. We also recommend that you let everybody verbally know on the phone that you are recording that meeting. If you happen to be on the phone, like in a conference phone or something like that, Microsoft Teams will audibly announce that the meeting is being recorded. So we'll go ahead and dismiss this banner because we're aware that we're recording. And you can see down here at the bottom that John Moore has started recording. And you see that little red dot indicator. Now if I'm somewhere else within Teams, say I'm over in another screen, my meeting is in the upper corner up here, the upper left corner, and you can see that little red dot right there lets everybody know that this meeting is being recorded. Now if I go to the chat, the chat for this meeting, it's a test meeting, will let me know and let everyone know in the chat that the meeting has started uh, to be recorded. So let's go back into the meeting and we can just share some content right here. So I can share my desktop and um, I can show everybody my, my pretty wallpaper and I can click around in some files here, show people how to get to certain things. And we'll just pretend that I'm doing a demonstration on my laptop. So I've stopped sharing, I'm still recording. Um, let's just let this recording run a little bit and I'll tell you about the permissions with recording um, inside of a Teams meeting. All recordings in Microsoft Teams are stored in the user's stream account that click the recording button. So if I click the recording button, it will be stored in my account in Microsoft Stream, which is part of Office 365. If um, Kyle on the meeting starts recording, it will be stored in his account. Now, even though that video is stored physically in my stream account in Microsoft Stream, it is automatically shared with everyone who was invited to the meeting. So any Cerner associate can just watch that video within Microsoft Stream. Let's talk about how to uh, stop a recording real quick. So when I'm done recording my screen, I'm done with, with that part of the presentation, I simply go back to those more actions at the bottom of the, the uh, screen and I can click stop recording. That will stop that video at that place and it will process the video in Microsoft Stream and post it to the chat in the meeting. So um, one thing that's missing what, that we were used to with WebEx is the ability to pause a recording and start a recording. With a Microsoft Teams meeting, there's no, um, there's no pause recording functionality. The way that Microsoft has designed recording in a Teams meeting is you start recording and you stop recording and it makes a video for that section. Now you can start another recording and stop that recording and it will just do another video within that same meeting. So you can chunk your meeting up into separate uh, video clips if you want to. Think of it like modules or something like that. Um, you can download the original video and put it into a tool like a Windows Movie Maker or um, iMovie or Camtasia if you happen to have that. You can put that into that software and stitch it together into one video and re-upload that if you want to. But by default, Microsoft will store each video individually um, in the meeting. So if we go over to the chat, we can see at the top here that the meeting was stopped recording, being processed in the cloud, and it's already available. This meeting is still going on, but the recording is available for me already inside of Microsoft Stream. Now, anyone who is a Cerner associate can just click on that little thumbnail right there and they can bring up the video and they can watch it right inside of Microsoft Stream without ever leaving the Teams, the Teams app. 
Now, if I want to share this with someone else, I can get a link to it and I can send that in an email at the end of the meeting. Say, hey everyone, here's a link to the recording and Cerner Associates will be able to view that in Microsoft Stream. If I want to share this with the entire company, I can click the share button. And what that will do is it will make the video accessible to everyone at Cerner. So if this is a general meeting that I want to just share broadly to anybody, because I'm doing a demo that, that anybody can see, I can click share and I can make that video available to anybody, grab a link and post that on Yammer, post it on SharePoint or somewhere else. Now, if I have a client on the call and I wanna share the video with the client, Unfortunately, Microsoft Stream is not yet available um, to external parties. That's coming later on this year. But in the meantime, you can download this video and you can share it with the client um, through OneDrive. So to do that, I would click on the three little dots and click open Microsoft Stream. And this will open up the video in the Microsoft Stream client. I'm logged in as myself. And I can simply click the three little dots on the video and download the original video. I can take that video and I can um, throw that into OneDrive and just send the link onto the client. They can watch the original video itself. While I'm in Microsoft Stream, here's where you can control the sharing capabilities even more granularly than in the Teams app. So again, if I click on the three dots and I open in Microsoft Stream, this gives me full power over the entire video. Now, if I click those three dots, I can update the video details in the middle. And now I have the full sharing capabilities. I can check the box to share with the entire company, or I can share it with just a group if I want to, like enterprise mobility. And I can share that with my entire team. If I wanna share that to a channel, like uh, Teams Tip Tuesday, I can share that with a channel inside of an Office 365 group or I can send it to specific people individually, like Kyle Burwalt. I can click on his face and I can add people individually if I want and click apply up at the top. I also in this area have access to control the people uh, recognition, the facial recognition and the comments. And I can also uh, generate captions if I want to. The people recognition is very cool. It's not going to work in this video, but if you have multiple people sharing their video camera inside of Microsoft Teams, it will show on this people timeline at the bottom, you'll be able to see um, the face of the person who is talking. So if you want to just see so-and-so's presentation, you can click on their face you're here in the timeline and you will see a bubble every time they were on screen, which indicates that they were the person who was presenting. If you click on that bubble, it will jump to that section in the timeline so that you can watch their part of the presentation. So that's it for recording in Microsoft Stream. Stay tuned for more Teams Tip videos every week and um, we'll see you in the next one.